Good morning. Welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel, we have 2 Corinthians 8.20. We want to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this liberal gift. Yeah, struggling with keeping my mouth shut and me being the one that's criticizing. So you'll see why in as we progress. So, all right. Off the hook, I have two. The first one is RJ's um, bag. Yes. Anyway, his shaving bag, um, I made it. Now, it is bigger than a regular man's shaving bag, and that's because RJ tends to throw things in a lot. I don't have the tack board for the bottom either, but I wanted it big enough to get him some kind of shaving mirror like this to go with it. So, um, I wanted it to fit in there, you know. And then... Uh, I actually have a plan for Christmas for this bag, and I'll explain it in the farmhouse. So, but the bag is done. Okay, just needs. I, I'm. I might make him a rope bag still because I have the stuff. So I just, if I don't get it done, I don't get it done. Um. Then I have another off the hook, and it's this one, and it is also for Christmas. It's to be given away, and it made with one of the yarns that I got from Mary Maxim. I love the way this stuff works up. I am very in love with how nice these uh, prayer shawls work up with this kind of yarn. Okay. Sorry about the light there. Um, it's still dark outside, but, and that's, it's not because it's any later than I normally record. It's just a shift of time. So, yeah, okay, I have that one. And then I found out that I kind of fibbed to you guys last week, not intentionally. Um, I said that I showed you all the projects I was working on. Well, I did, but I forgot two, and I haven't done any work on them. So technically, I guess I didn't. But this right here, the blanket, um, yeah, I haven't gotten... I've been, I have squares in the box, but I haven't done it, and I'm getting so close to the um, part where you switch, so uh, it's kind of, I guess, been in timeout, along with the reversible poncho that I did in two different shades, the dark and then the light, and this I haven't done any since I... Put it away a couple of months ago and i just have the the this edging to keep going and it's going to be long um for as much yarn as i have so and then after that i'll see how big it is and see if i need to add anything but pretty much i haven't worked on it at all so time out i guess and then the um, purple sweater. I still have it. It's down here. I haven't done any work on it. I got excited about all the new stuff that I started and I didn't do it. <laughs> I need to get, I have decided that for the next couple of weeks, you guys are just going to see these things finished up. Um, and this is what I'm going to be working on. I am also, I am also going to try and finish up the other things that I've started. And uh, I want to finish up my sewing. I'm working on Christmas, and I'll get into that in the farmhouse. So the next one that I, I actually have made progress on and worked on is this one, which is my uh, head scarf, going to be my head scarf. And so... And I don't know if you can see, but it's dark gray, and then it goes to light, and it's made with this, and it's got those pops of greens and pinks in the sparkly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the way this is working up. And like I said, this is, that one is Tunisian, okay, so it's Tunisian crochet, and it's coming along nicely. Um, then, this one... <sighs> Is coming along, but not as quick as I'd want it to, if that makes sense. Um, I, uh, let me get this out here. Sorry. 
uh, I hate it when my hook slides out of where I have it because then I end up pulling um, stitches when I'm showing you guys. So, all right, I'm on the second row and I actually switched from a double to a treble so that it would spread out a little bit more. And I've got, I don't know, I've lost my thing. There it is. I've got this much this um, of this row done. And then I still have quite a bit to go on it. And then I'm just going to keep going around and around. Now I have moved on to a third ball of yarn. Again, this one, uh, it's slow going because it's a very splitty yarn. Um, it splits. I, I don't know. I, it's a, a cotton blend. And so it does split a lot, but I mean, it, it'll still work. I just, it's slow going because it splits and it makes me mad. And so, yeah, I need to sit and just work on a couple of these and get them done. Now, the next one I'm working on, and I didn't even realize that I did this. So my apologies, but I did not podcast that I got this kit. It came like the day after I podcast. So, um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to show you the kit. Yes, I started it. And yes, I have. This is where I need to hold my tongue. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I'll explain why. So the kit came and it was these three balls of yarn. And I'll show you one. It's got pinks and browns and peachy. I really love the color of this. Okay. So, and it came with this pattern right here. Now, I, uh, I definitely have my issues with this pattern. And this is why for the first time I'm actually thinking of, um, saying something because this is a very poorly written pattern. A and there's two things I'll tell you, um, that just, uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So I started it. The yarn, it's a little sticky. Okay. But it is a super wash merino bamboo, bamboo blend. It's super soft. I love it. A little sticky, like I said. But lost my hook. Dang it. Place around here. I'll bet you it's on the chair where I put this up from the dog yesterday. So in there, I popped another stitch out. I hate that when my hooks come out. But okay. So it is working up beautifully. Okay. Once you get the whole pattern thing down. Now, I'll just point out two things. Okay. So in this, it says instructions make a magic circle. See below. Okay. So it gives you this right here. And it uses four single crochets. Okay, so I do a magic circle as demonstrated in the picture. Then it says uh, row one <clears throat> is chain three, double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, in circle and turn. Well, if you've got those four, you assume that you're supposed to, those that, that illustration is totally wrong. It, it never should have said make a magic circle. It should have said, and it should have never given the picture because that screws the whole pattern up, especially if you follow it to a T. So it should have said, uh, row one using the magic loop method, chain three, double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, in circle and turn. 
pull tail to close circle. Okay, we can look past that. Okay, they wrong, used the wrong picture. As you go down, you get to row three. It tells you to shell in the next two space. It tells you to shell through this whole pattern. The problem is the stitch that they're calling a shell is not a shell stitch. It's a V stitch. And this is not just what I make up. You can Google this. Um, this is not my grandma called this or that. This is common crochet knowledge. And this is not a shell stitch. So when you come to this side here, or this part right here, it says that's a shell stitch. That is not. It's a V stitch. Two double crochet, chain two, or if you're doing granny squares, that's a simple corner. The shell stitch starts with a single crochet, then does a double crochet, then does a triple or a half, depending on what you're wanting to do, half double crochet or anyway, it makes a fan shaped shell and it consists of five stitches. Okay. This is not a shell. So the whole um, first two rows when it told me it doesn't say to use the shell stitch until. Okay. Now keep in mind, I've got my four singles in there that are not like making it like flat. Then on row three, it starts telling you to shell. And it's by the time you get to row five, it won't do right because, and it doesn't even look right because it's not the shell. And honestly, guys, if I already know how to do the stitch, I don't read this up here. Why would I read how to do a shell stitch if I already know it? It's kind of like reading how to count four, two plus two on your fingers if you already know two plus two equals four. I don't need instructions to say one, two, three, four. I already know two plus two is four. It's already up here. It's been up here since I was in fourth grade. And this entire thing refers to a shell stitch and not one shell stitch is used in this pattern. Not one. It's the first time. Now, I will say this. I'm disappointed in how it's written. Okay. Flat out. It sucks. But once you get the gist of the pattern, this is, it works up beautiful. Okay. And you're going to go until it's 120 um, double crochets across here. So there's a certain row or whatever. Like I said, th there are some other issues. Um, first off, they say use a chain four. And so I'm going to have to do some serious blocking. This should be a chain three because a double crochet is two chains. And then the, the space one is one. So you should have three here that counts as your double crochet space one across. So that's why it looks bubbly out there is they've said to use a chain four. Chain four isn't the proper height. And so, yeah, I, I'm just, there are some things with this pattern that really need to be addressed, but it is a beautiful pattern once you get going. So, and, and I love this yarn. Um, it's, I, I think the color is what attracts me, but it is a super wash merino with bamboo, which is incredibly soft. So, and it's a single ply. It, it, it really is beautiful. And they paired it with a beautiful scarf. This is perfect for it. But the pattern needs to be written properly. That's all I'm going to say. And for the first time, I'm sitting here going, hmm, wonder if Mary Max knows that that pattern isn't, you know. And I did read on it that they take 
So on the back of the pattern that you get, it says, we have made every effort to ensure that these instructions are accurate and complete. We cannot be responsible for uh, misinterpretation or errors in individual work. Any corrections that are discovered will be posted on our website. Okay. The V-stitch being used instead of the shell stitch, but saying to use the shell, is that something, you know, being off on how many counts you sh or how many chains you should do for a double crochet space one? Double crochet space one, everybody knows double crochet is two. Space one is one. That's three. So to make it lie flatter, it should have been a chain three, not a chain four. There are others, but I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Um, I am contemplating because that using the, the V-stitch where the shell stitch belongs makes them look incompetent and like they didn't edit this pattern. Um, and like I said, that's not just, well, people call things differently. No, you can Google it. There are hundreds of people that demonstrate the shell stitch, and that is not it. There are hundreds of people that demonstrate the V-stitch, and that is it. So, I don't know if the person that they had doing it just was unaware that that stitch already had a name. Maybe they're just pulling something out. It looks like a little seashell. I don't know. Um, it, it's not. Not a shell stitch at all. And it's not a difference in language. There are books out there that are printed. You guys know that I have my 301 uh, crochet stitch things. You've, I've got my sampler book. I've got anything and everything. You name it, I've got it. Uh, anyway, I love the way it's working up. We will just move on. with. See, that's where the whole, you know, God bless me, not criticize. I need to hold my tongue. So anyway, I have decided that I have too many projects going. So I will be finishing up some of these um, over the next two weeks. I've actually put them in order that I think that I will finish them. And the three older ones are just going to have to sit in timeout except for the purple one. I want to try and get that done. But literally... I am going to try and get these three right here. My head wrap, the one that I just started, which it works up really easy. Um, that was just last night, and I had to interpret the pattern. You know, I mean, I ripped out, restarted, ripped out, restarted. So that one works up really easy. It's a mindless knit. And then this one I want to try and get done. So I'm not going to be able to get them all done uh, by next week. But you should definitely see progress on at least those three. The other three are older, and I will get to them. So um, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks to have them maybe done and off the hook. The blanket, I don't know, because I've got a long way to go on it. So anyway, all right, so that is... Off the hook, in the basket. I haven't dyed anything. I am looking for a wholesaler to see if I can get just some raw yarn so I can play with dye more so that you guys can see because I'm told that I spin yarn pretty fast. The problem is I don't spin it fast enough for myself, for the likes of myself, so that I can dye some. And I still have that pink dyed yarn that I need to make something into anyway. I'm not going to start another project until I'm done. Um, I think I already know what it's going to be, but anyway. So, I don't have anything on the wheel. Um, in the fields, I've been doing my plant thing. Uh, they're doing, they're coming along great. Um, in RJ's world. So, I need all y'all to send some good mojo to him. Or good vibes, good prayers, whatever you believe in, send them RJ's way. Uh, he has injured his knee and ended up in the emergency room. 
It swelled up real big, and it looks like he's going to have to get an MRI. They think there's something um, in with the cartilage. So, uh, yeah, he's been wearing a knee brace and soaking it, and he's, you know, waiting for the inning to get everything scheduled. And then, oh, I got to sneeze. I am so sorry. And then Coop, um, we had her to a vet. She's just sore. And we can't really figure out and pinpoint why or where. So um, the we took her to the first vet. He gave her some shots and injections. It worked, but it didn't last. So we took her to another vet and... They, I've always um, done horseshoes high and tight because that's the way they ride. But she, the vet said that with her getting older, she may need to be relaxed a little bit on her feet. So her person, um, they took x-rays of every foot and then put shoes on her and shot her the way that they want her to be so that maybe her muscles be a little bit more relaxed. Then they wanted her <clears throat> RJ to use a different kind of boot with her to sweat her feet out. Um, it's just a, a method of um, sweating toxins out of your body, um, inflammation, that kind of stuff. So I got those ordered for her and they'll come, I think, Monday. And so she'll be using different boots, different stuff. We're trying everything we can to get her sound. And so we need prayers and mojo for her that she'll, you know, she is a performance horse and we've always had her on the best of feed, the best of supplements, the best of everything. Um, she is, we say she's getting up there in life, but she's not. She is at the prime of her life for a horse. Horses can live to be 30 years old. She's about 15, and that is, they don't stop performing until, you know, 18, 20 a lot of times. So, we'll see. Um, I don't think she's quite 15. She might be 12. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But her and Ice both were, hey, hey, too loud. Pitches at my feet. He's always at my feet. So, yeah, we got that going on. Um, and like I said, just send him all the good vibes, good um, mojo, everything, you know, burn a candle for him, light an herb, <laughs> do your rock formation, whatever it is that you believe is going to send him the power of God. Um. Yeah, he just needs healing hands. That, that's it for him and for Coop. So, um, all right. The other thing that's been going on, we're going to move right on into in the farmhouse. Uh, so, we went down to the pond and we started clearing uh, the big willow tree. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It is bigger than we thought it was. Okay, half of it had fallen over into the water, and it, it's got like five, and it's a big weeping willow thing, and it's got probably five or six big round parts, I mean, huge, so, um, yeah, we went down to do that, and the reason is, it, we lost another duck, I don't know if I told you guys, but we're down to one lonely, I just call it baby duck, it's not really a baby, but um, and as a matter of fact, I didn't get a chance to go down there yesterday. I'll be going down this morning to verify that baby duck is still there. Um, Coon's got one. Uh, it looks like a dog or coyote carried the other one off. And then, of course, baby duck was still there. So we were clearing out the places that these things can hide and creep around to get to him. So um, we've got a long way to go. But I think that it's getting there. Um, 
we're going to go down and work. We, we're old. Okay. I'm just going to say it. I'm 53 years old and I can't work like I did when I was in my 20s. So we went down there in the cool of the morning, took about three hours. By noon, we were back in the house. <laughs> um, yeah, we had chainsaw going, cut down some of them, uh, parts of them. We picked out some trees that we're going to save, some oak trees. Um, and it'll get there. But I've got, I got a bunch of the limbs dragged up out of the water. The problem is, is they are so heavy coming you know, that are just gathered everywhere on the edge and half in the water, half out. They're so heavy that I just literally drag them up into the sunshine and let them dry out. Then I can move them in with no problem. But when they're half in the water and half out and half still green, oh my goodness, they were heavy. So I will show you the video that I made and I will pop it in right here. Good morning. I'm down here this morning. I'm gonna get y'all a little video. And uh, there's Baby Duck. Came over and ate some corn with me. We do our morning routine. He eats and then he takes his bath and all that good stuff. But so we've cleared out a lot of that. The, if you remember, there was brush just all along that edge, and I've cleared all that. I've still got some piles that were too heavy to move. I have to wait for them to dry out. I have a small pile right over there. And then I've got right there part of the roof and that. Um, as the water has receded, when I say the roof, there is a roof from some tornado damage from years, years, years ago. Can't really get to it to pull it out because if you look, these are deer tracks right here. And you sink, okay? So, oh, there's a baby duck. My last little baby duck. Hopefully this is keeping him safe by clearing this out and not having places for things to hide. But the biggest task, and I've got sticks here at my feet, and, but the biggest task, and you're going to hate this because of the sun, and I apologize, but I can't really change when the sun's <laughs> rising, but we have all of this, this big brush pile. This is probably twice as tall as me, so probably 8 to 10 feet tall, and it's not small either. Uh, we'll walk around some of it, but it's, it's a huge pile. <laughs> Now I'm short, so hey. But this one right here, you can tell it's dead, okay? Parts of it are dead, and it's split, and there's big parts that we've already cut down. There's more over there on that side. There is an oak tree right here, and this is the reason we stopped. I love oak trees, and I want the mighty oak to stay right here. You can see there's branches in the top of it. I don't know if you can see that with the sun right there. Don't know how to get the sun out. Um, and then there's another oak tree right over here. So, um, we're going to end up clearing all of that and leave one oak there, one oak here. Get rid of all these little, this big one. But the problem is, is if that one falls, I'm afraid it's going to fall on this oak tree. So we're going to have to, I think we're going to tie it to the tractor and pull it the other way as we cut. So, but all of this will end up being gone. Let me take you over to the other side here. Maybe that'll help with the sunshine. Okay, but see, we have all of that in there to clean up still. This to clean up still. I gotta get the biggest parts to the brush pile. But this will all be gone. You can see that that is huge in there. And it had just split every which way and you can see one is still, the ones that go out vertical are actually still connected. We haven't gotten that far out, but we sink in the mud. So sinking in the mud and, and operating a chainsaw doesn't really go together very well. So yeah, but no, we're, we're debating whether to take out that big tree right there too, because it's kind of all splitty at the bottom too. And I think it would look really nice with the oak tree over there, oak tree over here, and from here, to there all that cleared out except for those two big old oak trees i think that that would be good baby ducks over there he just got his morning routine i bring down some uh, corn he eats his corn then he gets in and takes a bath and we i peep at him because i'm scared he doesn't have any conversation now but yeah 
we're going to clear out that and then we're just going to have this line of trees we're going to thin it out a little bit get rid of some of this brushy stuff that's some trash off the highway great but get rid of that oh there's a turtle bubbling in the pond i don't know if you can see that and now the fish went crazy because the turtle did something but yeah so it's getting there our biggest problem is that we're sinking in the mud while we do it so the closer we get to the water the more we sink and this thing right here i don't want it falling on that little um oak i want that oak to grow up so yeah a lot of work going on down at the pond though okay so as you can see we don't have it all done we stopped in the middle next weekend i will go down there and as everything dries out i will get some stuff done um but it should, I should have all the sticks and stuff cleaned up and everything that I can move by myself in the brush pile. That brush pile is probably 10, 8 to 10 foot high now. So we are in a burn van. And uh, to illustrate my point last night, um, someone had flicked a cigarette out the window of a car into the medium and there was a medium a brush fire in the medium between the two high, right out here. I mean, like we stood out in the yard and watched it. And then there was some, so if it's on the north side of the river and it's a little caney river, it's not a huge river. Okay. Uh, so if it's on the north side, it falls in Rogers County. If it's on the south side, it falls in Tulsa County. Well, last night we sat here and watched it almost burn itself out before they figured out whose jurisdiction this fire was in. Because the one that responded said it's not in our jurisdiction, so they had to call somebody else out. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. If you are the first fire department on the scene, I don't care what jurisdiction you're in, put the darn thing out and move on. Oh my gosh. I have never died laughing so hard in my life as to listen to that scanner. Well, it's north of the the bridge and blah. it was a little old grass fire. Didn't take a few minutes. And even if they just let it go, it's the center medium that's gonna run down to the river. It's gonna burn itself out. There was no place for it to go. So the whole thing played out stupidly. And if that had been a house on fire, God forbid that the wrong fire department respond because they're not going to do anything. It was ridiculous. Oh, anyway, that's enough of that. It, honestly, you guys, if you live in the country, know which jurisdiction. Don't just dial 911. Know your uh, sheriff's office's phone number so that you can get the right help because honestly it's not it's not like in the city um they fight over whose jurisdiction it is well yeah it nearly burned itself out and was still smoldering by the fire by the time the correct fire department got there it was just smoldering they wet it down and went on if that had been a house or a car or life at stake Really? We're going to fight over whose jurisdiction a little fire is in? Instead of just doing our job and saying, hey, by the way, you know, guys, we took that for you, but that was actually north of the bridge and your jurisdiction. So we need to bill your department for that. Who cares? All we care about is being safe. Who cares what fire station responds the first one there needs to take care of the issue. That was absolutely ridiculous last night. So anyway, all right, I said enough, it's enough. But yeah, the burn pan is still on. So we have two big old brush piles. They will be burned as soon as we get enough rain that the burn ban is lifted. Okay, and we control our own fires. Um, it's the sparks and the embers that you can't control. So we won't be having an issue with it, but definitely not until the burn ban is lifted. All right, you guys. So that's all I've got for this week. Um, I know it's kind of a lot, kind of rambled on, 
got on my soapbox about a pattern, got on my soapbox about the fire department. I just need to hush up, get ready for work, move on. So actually, I'm going to go check my little duck. I do that in the mornings before I go to work. So, yep, I'll go see baby duck, and then I'll get ready for work, and I will see y'all next week. And please, please send RJ some healing thoughts, mojo, healing hands, prayers, um, whatever it is you believe in, um, send it his way for me. Talk to y'all next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.